welcome to a daytime version of Crop Chocolate TV. Yeah, sure. Okay, here we go. Here you go. <laughs> well, so on today's Crop Chocolate TV, uh, I had gotten an email from a new chocolate maker who had all sorts of questions about cleaning. And I thought we could do like a little fun quickie about cleaning. Yes. That's going to be the title of the episode, Carson. Quickie about cleaning. <laughs> yes, and it's You're probably <laughs> one of the most... <laughs> One of the most underrated or least thought about or yeah. considered yeah. parts of this entire process. And I'd say we spend somewhere between 30 and 40% of our time, if not more, actually cleaning. Right. Uh, yeah. And so in, in particular, your question or his question is in regards to cleaning a ball mill? Well, specifically his question, and this happens to a lot of people, is they get a health inspector come in. And the health, health inspector says, well, you got to wash everything. Because that's what health inspectors are used to. Like, you got to wash everything. And so, in the United States, at least, uh, there is the, there's a difference between wet cleaning and dry cleaning. Dry cleaning meaning you're scraping things down, you're wiping things down, but you're not using water. Because chocolate being a fat system, you introduce water, you're introducing vectors for bacterial growth. Mm -hmm. But not every health inspector understands this. Mm -hmm. I think almost no health inspectors understand chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, that's that we, we run into this all the time. It's like I think one of the things we probably need to do is as an industry have like the, the this is the this is what to give your health inspector. Like here's the documentation yeah. that everybody just shares and says this is how it works. But so like but but you know, so case in point, how do you clean a ball mill if not with soap and water? You never want to put water in your ball mill. What we do is we flush it with more cocoa butter. And so, depending on the size of your ball mill, we have the pack into 130s. We would put somewhere around 20 kilos in, 20 to 25 kilos, which is one block of butter, and that flushes the whole thing out. And so, there's a strategy to doing this because let's say you just ran dark chocolate or milk chocolate, all the balls have a pretty thick layer yeah. of chocolate surrounding them. It's about 30% of the material that's left in the machine, if I recall correctly. Uh, it's a lot. Yeah. Right? And so what we would do is we would add somewhere around five kilos to that. And then we would close the exit valve, which is a pneumatic valve. So everything is now closed again and recirculating. And that flushes or thins out the remaining chocolate yeah. quite a bit. We then open the exit valve again take as much chocolate out, which we would then get probably like 15, 20 kilos yeah, yeah. potentially. I mean, fill up a five gallon bucket at least. Yep. And then we would close the valve again. So it's a uh, circulating loop. We'd add another five kilos and we'd continue to do that right. until we've done 20 or 25 kilos. The balls are pretty much perfectly clean after that. Well, and, and part of the reason you, you clean is let's say you have contamination. This happens. Right. Like contamination happens. You know, you had a bag of beans that and this is this has happened to us. You have a bag of beans that you found peanuts in because they were using equipment to like sort peanuts and then they use to sort cocoa and suddenly there's peanuts. So now you have an allergen, like at, at least for dandelion, a company that like everything we do is two ingredient, very allergen friendly. We the last thing we want is to be introducing allergens into machines. And so um, one of the reasons you need to clean is to make sure that you are flushing if there's some, some contamination, whether it's microbiological or like, you know, uh, allergens, any of these things. You need to figure out how to get that allergen out of the machine without necessarily washing the whole thing. Because, again, like you I mean, it's not that you'll never you have you ever washed your ball now? No. So we wash our which, ball mill. Which you can. You yeah, just you have to can. make sure you turn all the heat on and then make sure it, everything it just evaporates. Takes a, it, exactly. And, but the risk is that there's water left there. That water becomes a vector for bacterial growth. In, in like, And now you're introducing right. risk, yeah, which I, is I what mean, you're trying to avoid. Stone melangers, hot water, great. No problem. Right. It dries out really well. Although, ball mills... Probably a horrible idea to clean with water. Well, I, I, so so I don't unless you take all the balls out yeah. as well. We, that's what that's what we did when we did it. We basically took all the balls out, washed all the balls, washed the inside of the machine. Um, but um, at Dandelion, we don't actually clean our melangers either. We do a dry clean on the melangers specifically because everything we're doing is two ingredient. So we don't have to worry about like milk contamination. Yeah, or... you, you never have to clean them then in that yeah. case. And that's what we do. The only time we ever clean them is, again, if there's a contamination event. Somebody dropped something in the melanger. And so right. then we wash the whole thing out. But right. like when in general, we... we just 
dry clean. When we use our stone melangers, and if it's just dark chocolate on dark chocolate, yeah. we would just get one of those scrapers. Exactly. Same. And... I mean, I don't know how... Uh, we, we got to the point where we were pretty good at it, where you would turn the dial and you'd run it on, yeah. and you'd tilt and you'd... it slightly, and you could pool up all the chocolate, scrape the wheels really clean. You could get so, it to the point where there's, I don't know, one percent less than yeah. 1% of chocolate that remained yeah. in that thing, and then, boom, you just drop every, uh, all your nibs in and start again. Yeah, same. That's exactly... We would do the same thing. Um, the other thing that's important for cleaning, for, from our perspective, is math. Sounds like an odd thing to need for cleaning. But um, when you're talking about, like, contamination, that right? Pun. No. no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pretty right. good. Yeah, anyway, that was a good on. <laughs> Even so. Hey. 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 Anyway. <laughs> Intended. Um, uh, uh, when you have contamination, one of the things you're trying to figure out is, like, are you putting anybody at risk? And so what we would do is we do calculations of, like, uh, if you flush something three times, you know, how, like, assuming even distribution, how much of any original potential contamination is left after the third flush? And this is one of the things we would do is we would often do the sort of calculations about how much is potentially left after X number of new cycles through a machine. Because at some point, it like, especially for us, I, again, like, if you're, if you're using allergens like milk powder... Um, then you're going to have to clean periodically to get rid of those allergens. But for us, it's like we basically only dry clean unless absolutely, absolutely necessary. And you also have things like the roaster. Like you can't clean the, in the inside of a roaster out. Certainly not easily. No, definitely not. Um, we, I, I'm very certain we've never cleaned out the inside of our roaster, right? But if peanuts went through your roaster, now you have an aller potential allergen. So that's why we use... We will sort of do calculations of, okay, well, let's assume a full peanut, you know, we found a peanut. Let's assume a full peanut was crushed in all these beans. How many cycles of beans would you have to go through before the, you know, there's, no allergy, there's like 0.01% is, uh, you know, of what of a, the original one I, I don't know how many more questions are here in regards to cleaning, but one of uh, the things that we learned over time was that having a grease trap which is basically just a box that sits under your sink where yeah. water flows, yeah, yeah. is going to be a lifesaver for oh my God. your pipes downstream uh, because it's just a matter of time before they clog up. The amount of cocoa yeah. butter and chocolate that turns into a layer of disgusting grease would blow most people's minds. Oh, yeah. So you want... We no, scrape great everything point, great point. so well, and still we're having our grease trap pumped You know every... Three to four months, um, which we used to do ourselves, which is just a horrific job that's hard to explain to anyone who's never actually done it. Yeah, yeah. It's probably it, the most disgusting thing I've ever it's done. It's like in my rancid life. fat and yeah. the smell of rancid fat. Um, uh, I, uh, so, so you can call someone and they pump it out for yeah. like 90 bucks, 100 bucks, and it's totally um, worth so, it. So, in our cafes, we clean our grease trap out once every two weeks. Be well, because we have, it's not just chocolate going through there. It's like chocolate and milk and all these other yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. And it, and the problem is if you're, so grease traps are super critical. If you're building a factory, grease traps. You got to have one. So we didn't critical. have one the first two oh. factories we built. Yeah. And so I was constantly dealing with clogged drains. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and um, the f I remember the first time our grease trap overflowed, we didn't know what a grease trap was. And then we like. And, no, exactly. Like, <laughs> well, we didn't have one, but I we, well, we had one in the building. We just didn't know what it was, and so like we like we're following all the like on the the floor plan, and then we're like, what's this box? And we opened it up, and it was like the worst smell you've uh -huh. ever smelled in your life. Yeah, like closed um, down. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You cannot let people into the building when you're cleaning out a grease trap. That's for sure. Um, but no, I think that's really good advice. Is is make sure you have a grease trap so that it's catching. Yeah, it's basically an eight hundred dollar plastic box. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, that just that just essentially filters filters mostly fat, but like fat out of Which the water that's going through. Yeah, and exactly. then the water would continue to flow right. below it. And so that you don't have to clean out pipes, like you know, uh, like oh, yeah. power washing your your sewer pipes. Is and you can only do that so far. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, what else is on that oh, list? Um, so one question this health inspector had is, why doesn't cocoa butter, or, or if you're using hot cocoa butter, won't it go rancid, I believe was the question. Hot cocoa butter? Flushing with hot cocoa butter. How does this not get rancid over time? Well, there's no water in cocoa butter. Exactly. 
Yeah. I mean, fat, this is why chocolate lasts for what we have a five year old dandy bar. D- dandy bar. <laughs> dandy bar. A five year old dandy bar. It was a dandy bar. Last night. Yeah, that's true. And it was great. And yeah. it was kept at the right storage temperature. Um, we had one, a, a Manoa bar that was close to 10 years old, not all that long ago. It was fine because we'd kept it in a wine fridge. Probably not milk chocolate, though. It was not milk chocolate. Yeah, exactly. No, that yeah, was a milk chocolate. chocolate's a whole different story. Right. But going back to cocoa butter is that's why chocolate lasts so long. Yeah. There's no water in it. Right. So Yeah. And so it won't go rancid. The temperature um, is not important in right. this scenario. Yeah. I, I think one of the things that a lot of health inspectors don't necessarily understand is they're used to dealing with dairy. Like they're they're you know, they're dealing with dairy all the time with cafes and restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. Like dairy and meat. And and so and so dairy has fat, but it's basically a water system. And so that's why, and I, I, I do think that this health inspector, when he heard cocoa butter, he probably thought like, it's like actual butter. Uh-huh. And so yeah, he's probably, probably thinking like, you're using hot butter to like clean. Sure. That sounds terrible. Sure. I remember and, <laughs> not understanding what cocoa butter I, was until I, I had to use it all the time. I do too. Yeah. But um, I, I think I think in dealing with health inspectors, one of the things it's important to understand is like, they none of them have ever seen chocolate factories. All of us, the first time we've dealt with a health inspector, had to explain all sorts of things to them. Which is why we weren't required to have a grease trap. And right? we elected and, to have one for our own right? sake. But they should have. They basically should have Absolutely. told you it needed to have a grease trap. Which is a good point. Um, but th- since they're used to dealing with dairy, I think that's the mindset to go in when talking to a health inspector. Is like, assume they, they, they're they used to dealing with dairy. And so the questions they have are like, well, I'm used to dealing with fat, but you still have to, you know, it's like you cl- you you have to wash things that milk has been in. Yeah. Clearly. But like that's because it is mostly a water-based system with some fat versus chocolate, which is a fat system. Yep. And I think that's like one of the things that people have to drive home to health inspectors is this is a fat system, this is not a water-based system. Yeah, there was something else that we almost didn't they they almost didn't give us a passing certificate. And so one of the things that we did to overcome not having a, a floor sink oh, yeah, yeah. was to simply install a backflow preventer onto yeah. the piping so that if the sewers were to overflow, it couldn't come up through our sinks oh, and then onto the entire factory floor. Interesting. That was a good little hack. And she's like, oh, no one ever has asked if we can do that, but that would solve your problem. And so for like, mm-hmm. I don't know, $15, we bought a backflow preventer. You know, installed it on underneath the sink so that water couldn't come through our grease trap back up into the uh, sink. That's cool. That's a that's a good hack. Oh yeah, yeah. I, there was no way right. I was going to want to start jackhammering the floor up to add a Oof. floor sink just yeah. because, which we would never have used anyway. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. this case. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I'm sorry, Carson, the man behind the the camera, has a question for us. I'm just wondering what sort of resources could a chocolate maker provide a health inspector that would verify that it's scientifically so proven. that is a that's and I, I i was only half kidding about this this is exactly the kind of thing i think our industry needs is like a, a a set of information that you can print out and give a health inspector and say this is how health inspections for chocolate that should work. would probably help i think it also depends on where in the united states or where in the world you yeah, are yeah. because everyone's going to have a different right idea of how to how to do this i think yeah. we've been really lucky Right. I think in California, it's a lot more challenging. We yeah. also started really small, yeah, yeah. and you guys started much bigger. Yeah, um, there, there probably are scientific resources out there. Um, I'll take a look, and maybe we'll post with the video. Maybe, maybe we'll post with the video some uh, some resources that can be sent around about um, cleaning and chocolate. There, it's got to exactly exist. Um, maybe I'll reach out to the folks at Penn State. That, oh, this yeah. is exactly the kind of thing they probably actually have a lot of information about. Yep. Um, Good resource. Yep. Definitely. All right. All right. This has been another episode of Craft Chocolate TV. In the daytime. (laughs) Which I now have to go back to making chocolate and fixing things and cleaning. (laughs) Sounds good. See you next time. See ya.